This is one of my favorite novels, The Magic Mountain by Thomas Mann. It was written about a hundred years ago and it fits quite well in our corona times because it features people, tuberculosis patients, being locked up in a hospital far up in the Swiss mountains. But that's not the reason I want to talk about it. I want to talk about it because there's one chapter in it where Thomas Mann speculates about the phenomenon of life. And he writes sentences like, what was life? No one knew. If there was anything that might be said about it, it was this, it must be so highly developed structurally that nothing even distantly related to it was present in the inorganic world. Now, the funny thing is that was written by a novelist a hundred years ago, and still we don't really know how to answer this question, how inorganic matter can become so complex and organize itself in a way that it makes the transition from inorganic to living. And that's what my research is concerned with, to try to find the point where such a transition can actually become reality. And how do we do that? Well, if we're talking about living system, we always have to think about cells, because cells are really the smallest unit of life. So if we ask ourselves now, what makes cells so special? It is that the molecules within them yeah, not just homogeneously distributed, like in an ideal gas or fluid, but upon energy dissipation, they self-organize into gradients and patterns and structures. And from there, they basically transform the system and evolve towards even higher degrees of complexity. The ideal starting point for mimicking a lifelike system would be to create such a molecular self-organization and pattern formation from scratch. And we know the fundamental features. They have been understood for quite some time. It's basically nonlinear chemical reactions and diffusion. But it has been quite tough to design a system that operates in aqueous environment and actually performs exactly this. Our inspiration can, of course, come from native systems. So how are proteins doing it? In cells. Our group has, in the last years, very thoroughly investigated one particular cellular system, the MinDE protein system from E. coli, which does very funny pattern formation. It basically oscillates between the two poles of the cell on a minute time scale. And by this positions the division axis for these cells. And if you now take these proteins out of the cell and purify them and bring them to a supported membrane that looks like the inside of the bacteria with the only difference that it's completely flat, then these oscillations turn into traveling waves with a certain propagation speed. So these proteins can be brought to self-organize and form patterns in vitro. And the cool thing is now that we can not only use the proteins, but we can also mutate them. And by this produce different patterns. For example, smaller wavelengths or completely different ones like leopard skins. So we now understand what we have to do to the system to create particular patterns. And we can even go further and not stay with the proteins, but create hybrids between proteins and DNA and produce completely new molecules that are potent of pattern formation, which is so fundamental for the emergence of life.